video The direct-to-video market of the late 90s and early 2000s. What a time it was. Video store shelves were flooded with all manner of low-budget slashers, each one trying to cash in on the success of movies like Scream, Urban Legend, and I Know What You Did Last Summer. There were some good ones, and there were some really bad ones. I know, because I rented most of them. All it took was the familiar Mount Rushmore-style floating head artwork on the VHS box, and I couldn't resist. There were some standouts. Movies like Cherry Falls, The Pool, The Clown at Midnight, Campfire Tales, A Crack in the Floor, and Lover's Lane. Plot-wise, Lover's Lane doesn't do anything that we haven't seen done before. Many times before. Here we're treated to an escaped hook-handed killer stalking a bunch of horny teens at a you guessed it, Lover's Lane. Toss in the whole history repeating itself due to a past sin that still haunts the community today motif, and the rest practically writes itself. However, you can tell that some thought was put into the story. What at first seems like a straightforward slasher ends up being a little more mysterious than you'd expect, with revelations and reveals popping off right up until the end. This isn't a meta slasher either. There aren't references to other movies, characters don't realize that they're actually in a slasher movie, and no one espouses the rules. History really does repeat itself. Lover's Lane is an atmospheric slasher, using its rainy Seattle area shooting locations to their fullest. The cast is pretty good too, and you can't mention this movie without also mentioning that Anna Faris turns in one of her earliest performances as one of the movie's most curious characters, Janelle. You see, Janelle's wardrobe consists of a cheerleader's uniform. She's the only character in the movie that I can recall donning said uniform. There's no mention of a game, and she's supposed to be the new kid in school. There's also no school name or logo on the uniform either. I don't know. Maybe that's all she had clean that day. Maybe those uniforms are just really comfortable. <sighs> This is something that's haunted me for years. I need answers. The kills aren't anything special, although there is ample bloodshed. We get a scene in which one character is titillated and then tortured by the killer prior to being killed. It's a bizarre and strangely brutal sequence. Another kill involves a character sitting on a bed, while unbeknownst to them, the killer is under them. The killer slowly raises their hook up between their legs and... Although we don't see exactly what happened, it's pretty clear that it wasn't good. The killer and their wardrobe is simplistic. However, the killer does have this enigmatic quality that makes him stand out. In fact, there are a couple of sequences in the film that add an almost supernatural element to the character. Lover's Lane clearly did not have the biggest budget to work with. However, it's a competently made and nicely photographed film. The characters are, for the most part, likable. And I like the slowly unfolding mystery elements. This movie also has a time capsule-like effect on me personally. Of all the late 90s and early 2000s direct-to-video slashers, this one is definitely among the most late 90s and early 2000s. So whenever I watch the movie, it's like I'm transported back in time. A simpler time. A time of limitless possibilities and experiences. A different time. In a lot of ways, a much better time. Minus the Jinko jeans. Those were a horror show in and of themselves. Lover's Lane is no masterpiece. It doesn't do anything you haven't seen countless other slashers do and do better. However, it is a fun slasher. I've seen it many times and I'm thoroughly entertained and filled with nostalgia each and every time. I love Lover's Lane, and if you love Lover's Lane, then this upcoming Blu-ray release for Lover's Lane from Arrow Video should definitely be added to your collection. This release features a brand new 2K restoration from a 4K scan of the original 35mm camera negative. This is far and away the best Lover's Lane has ever looked. The new restoration has done wonders to provide the image with all new levels of clarity and definition. The murkiness of the old DVD has been replaced with an overall more natural color palette. On the downside, grain levels do drastically increase during the nighttime or lesser lit sequences, and damage from the negative is visible at times. As for audio, this release features a 2.0 stereo track, which I thought was full-bodied and crystal clear. 
If you've been holding on to that ancient DVD release for Lover's Lane all these years, you can finally retire it. I'd give the overall picture quality and sound quality on this release a solid 4 out of 5. This release comes with a slipcase featuring newly commissioned artwork by Ilan Sheedy. The sleeve is reversible featuring original and newly commissioned artwork. We also get a poster with original artwork on one side and the newly commissioned artwork on the other. And we get a booklet featuring an essay by Lindsay Hallam. This release gives you the opportunity to watch Lover's Lane in its original 4-3 aspect ratio or a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. And considering that I've seen the film on both VHS and DVD many times over, I chose the 1.85 to 1 and I thought it looked great. The image did not look stretched or distorted in any way. As far as extras, first up we have Screaming Teens, The Legacy of Lover's Lane. It's 31 minutes and 37 seconds in length. It includes interviews with producers Jeff Miller and Rory Ville and actors Matt Wrighty and Carter Ray. Mr. Miller and Mr. Ville discuss uh, the genesis of Lover's Lane, developing the story, their influences, the 50s TV Easter eggs in the movie, what excited them about doing a slasher, hiring John Ward to direct, and the contributions he made to the story. Mr. Wrighty and Mr. Ray discuss auditioning, their characters getting slashed, and working late hours. They discuss their favorite scenes in the film, screening the film, making a distribution deal with Blockbuster, uh, how pleased they are with the film finding new life on Blu-ray, and much more. We get an audio commentary with writers and producers Jeff Miller and Rory Veal, and we get a trailer and image gallery. This is a lovely release for Lover's Lane from the fine folks over at Arrow Video. If you've seen Lover's Lane, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, let me know what your favorite late 90s, early 2000s direct-to-video slasher is. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.